So I call this uh, training Advance Beyond uh, because we all need to advance beyond the comfort zone, advance beyond uh, the uh, things that we don't like to do. We need to advance beyond the basics in order to become successful in anything really. So the first thing uh, that is very important obviously in uh, our line of work, you know, in our line of business in network marketing is the first sentences. So what do we say when we uh, start talking to people? So uh, there are a couple of things that your first sentences should uh, have or uh, should be like. So the first thing that your sentence has to do is get rid of the pyramid objection. Also it has to get people excited. It has to get the prospect thinking on how can I join. It has to get rid of the training objection has to get rid of the comfortable objection and it has to give your prospect confidence. So how we do all of these things in just one sentence? Well, the sentence that I used quite a lot and that does all of these things is most people do network marketing every day but they just don't get paid for it. Now this is a very very interesting sentence when you uh, start thinking about it. Now it uses a couple of things. First thing that it says, it says uh, most people do network marketing every day. Now if uh, most people do something, then obviously it's legal. Now pyramid uh, business is illegal, so obviously if most people do network marketing every day, it can't be a pyramid, can it? It cannot be illegal. Now also we say that most people do it every day, but they just don't get paid for it. Now what network marketing is, is in essence, is recommending and promoting things that we like. So, these things we do every single day. We recommend stuff that we like, we promote stuff that we uh, enjoy uh, to people all the time. Now the problem is that we never get paid for it. We never get paid by the companies that uh, our friends go to and buy these products from etc. for our recommendation. We never get paid for it. However, we already know how to do it. So this sentence actually does quite a few things. It gets rid of the training objection where a person would say, oh, I don't know uh, if I'll be able to do it. Well, you've been doing it all your life. All you, only thing you need to do now is start collecting money for it. Also, you know, uh, it takes away a, a lot of the objections that people normally would have because most people do it, then I can do it too. And this is how it helps uh, to speak to people. So network marketing is all about recommending and promoting things that you like. And we all do it every day when we talk to family, friends and colleagues about the movie we've just seen, the restaurant uh, that we've just been to, brilliant song we heard, etc. We recommend stuff all the time. Now, the offer always needs to be uh, realistic, if you like. You know, you can never, uh, you, your offer can be the best offer in the world, but if it's not realistic, it'll be very difficult for people to understand, you know, and to do it, you know. So you can say, oh, you know, would you like to earn, I don't know, 20,000 pounds for 10 seconds of work? And a lot of people would go, yeah, 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 I would like to. And then you explain to them that the 10 seconds work that they'll have to do is get on the ring and uh, do some boxing with Mike Tyson. Now then they can realize why it only will take 10 seconds and why, you know, they will be resting for a long time after that, you know. And obviously when once you told them the details, people will not be interested in doing uh, what you offer them to do. So in this business, we need to make sure that we tell people that it's not really a rocket science. Everybody can do it. Everybody can recommend uh, a nice perfume to somebody. Everybody can recommend a way to make a few hundred pounds a month to somebody. You know, it's not that difficult really and it's not that uh, complicated. Also showing people how they can collect what they're earning already. You know, we always say that there's two types of people in this world. Those who earn for recommending and those who don't. So it's every one of these individuals choice to choose which side they would like to be. But we need to make sure that we educate them and explain to them that they can be collecting what they earn already. Okay, how do we recognize leaders in our networks? Now, who are the leaders in your downline? Now, we just had uh, a little leaders meeting at our Diamond Orchid's house, at Arena's house today, and there were leaders there. Now, how would you recognize these leaders in your downline? How would you know that, oh, this person is a leader and this person uh, could reach potentially a lot more than uh, others? Well, leaders are professional students of the business who invest time to learn. 
So like today on this webinar, I can actually see people that are attending and listening to this webinar. And again, I know that these people are investing time to learn about the business, that they are trying, you know, the best in order to learn and to be the best at what they do, you know. And you can see these people in opportunity presentations, in training events, on webinars, everywhere. These people will be investing time to learn the business. And there's no other way, really. You can't become a diamond with no knowledge, can you? You know, I always say to people, if you started to work in a factory, uh, would they make you our CEO or director on the first day? No, I'm sure they wouldn't because you would have to learn how the business works, what is the product, how that product is made, etc., etc., before you can progress, you know, uh, through the career steps. So same in this business, it's no different. In order for you to become successful, you will have to learn things and probably beyond the basic, you know, before you can succeed. How do you help these leaders develop then? You know, how do you, if you spotted one of these leaders in your team and you think, oh, this person could do a lot more, how do you help them develop? Well, good questions. Firstly, obviously we need to invite them to presentations, training events and conferences. It's absolutely vital for a person to see other people who are going through the same thing. Now, if you start a business and you're on your own, nobody's helping you, you're sitting at home, etc., lots of bad thoughts will start coming to your head, you know, oh, you know, I didn't succeed in this and I didn't succeed in that, etc., etc. But when people come to trainings, presentations, etc., and they see other people who are going through the same things and who are succeeding, then they get the inspiration. They think, hang on a second, that person is same like me. I could do this too if they've done it already. You know, and this is what this business gives, you know, but you need to attend these events. Also, provide materials to develop uh, network marketing skills. So these can be books, CDs, practical advice. And again, you know, there's lots of these resources floating in all of the teams, etc. And very often it doesn't have to be that expensive. It doesn't have to cost anything, to be honest with you. Now with technology of nowadays, you know, all the uh, websites, webinars, etc., online training materials, you can find so much for free. It doesn't cost a penny, really. If you look on, uh, you know, websites of other uh, big uh, trainers of self-development, etc., you'll see lots and lots of free resources that you can download and use it for yourself and then share it to your team, etc. Also, the team websites, like my team website, other team websites, again, I've created a website, I've uploaded lots of files over there where people can download, listen to them, watch them, read them, etc. And my team members benefit of that because they can use those resources for free. It doesn't cost anything for them. So... You know, it's not an excuse saying, oh, having good money to buy any books on network marketing or any CDs. You don't have to spend money. If I mean, uh, if you look serious at this business, you will invest at one point or another some, uh, you know, money into yourself, really, by uh, buying these books and CDs. But to begin with, there's plenty of these resources around. So firstly, you need to make sure that you read them, you listen to them, and you watch them. And then you need to provide these materials to your leaders in your team who will develop. Okay, so there are three levels of commitment, uh, if you like, in this business, and uh, some are better than others, and uh, we will have a look through them. So the first level of commitment is when the person says, well, I'll try it. That's really a worst level of commitment, to be honest with you, because that means that the person will quit any time they like, you know, probably the first difficulty they'll get uh, in front of them, and they'll quit the business, because they're just going to try it, is it? So as soon as they don't like it or they feel that they have to go out of the comfort zone, they'll say, nah, this is not for me, I'll quit. And that's what people will do. Now the second level of commitment is when people say, I'll do my best. Now this is a lot better than I'll try it. Because the person says that they'll do everything they can in order to succeed in this business. So they'll do what they think is up to their ability, which is a really good level of commitment. However, the best level of commitment, and that's when you can tell that you've got a leader in your team, is when the person says, I'll do whatever it takes. When a person says that, you know that the person will do everything. They'll do something that is more than they can do. And these people will say that I will do whatever it takes to get to the level they want to get, you know, to get to that diamond, to get uh, to that Mercedes car, to get to whatever I want from life. You know, these are the people who take what belongs to them in life. They don't wait for it to fall out of the sky. And to be honest, all of us should be like that. All of us should have that attitude that I will do whatever it takes in this business in order to succeed. I will organize a training webinar on Sunday 
in order to become successful in this business, right? Also, providing these learning materials. Now, it's very important how we provide these learning materials. Let's say you've got a book at home that you've read about network marketing, you think it's really useful, and you're thinking of lending it to somebody. Now, you need to be very, very careful in how you lend these uh, materials and how you uh, share these materials with uh, people in your team. So first, obviously, would be a question to ask, you know, would you like to read this book? And there's two possible answers. So if the person says, yes, I would like to read this book, there's a way how you lend it. Now, there's a few things that you need to say. First thing, you say, let me lend you a copy of this book. Now, the word underlined here is lend you a copy of this book. That means that the book is still yours. You're only giving to that person for a certain period of time, and they will have to give it back. Because sometimes people get a resource from you, a CD or a book, and they'll just stick it on the shelf to collect the dust. And that's not really a good use of it. The second thing that you say, that I will pick it up in a couple of days. Now, this tells a few things. Uh, firstly, obviously, uh, that you're giving this book, but you will pick it up in a couple of days. So there's uh, sort of an urgency to it. So the person needs to get on with it and read it or watch the CD or DVD or whatever it is. Whatever you're giving them, you're only giving them for a couple of days. So they haven't got, you know, 10 months to go through it, etc. And the final thing you say, I'll pick it up in a couple of days because other people would like to read it too. Now, this sentence do some uh, very, very nice trick in people's mind. Because when you say that, people think, hang on a second, if other people want to read it too, there must be something good in that book. So they'll be a, bit, a, a lot more inclined to actually take that book and read it, you know, and actually uh, listen to that CD or watch that DVD. So you would, this is how you would lend the resource. You would say, well, let me lend you a copy of this book. I'll pick it up in a couple of days because other people would like to read it too. And that's it. You lend it for a couple of days and you decide, is it one day, two days, a week or whatever it is, but don't give it for, you know, unlimited period of time because most of the time people are not going to even use it. Now, if the person says no, when you ask them, would you like to read this book? Well, the answer is simple. Now, obviously, you say, great, the next time I've got a free available copy of this book, I'll be sure to come by and lend it to you. Now, whether you're going to do that or not is up to you. However, obviously, if the person said, nah, they would, don't want to invest time to learn, obviously, uh, you just realize that this is not a leader in your team, is it, if they don't even want to invest time to learn the business. Okay, successful prospecting. Now, one very important thing to realize is that in a lot of the cases, we don't find prospects, we create them. Now, when I say that, I mean that the prospects are neither negative or positive when you first meet them. They are neutral, and you uh, pretty much influence the way they go. Now, there are exceptions to that in uh, saying that there are some people who are very negative about any type of business, including network marketing, and there are some people that are really, really positive about it, and they'll call you themselves and ask to join your business. However, majority of the people they haven't got that strong an opinion about uh, network marketing or your company. And the way you approach them and the way you'll speak to them will determine which way they will go, whether they're going to go to the negative side and think, nah, this is actually not for me, or whether they go into positive side and say, well, oh, I think I could do this too, you know, I could join you. So then, obviously, comes an uh, important bit where we realize that people are reactive. So, it is very important not only what we say, but how we say it. Now, it, it is good to know your opportunity presentation, to know all the facts and figures, etc. However, it's very important to be representable, to represent your business in the way that you would like uh, it to be represented. Now, I always say, you know, would you join you if you approach yourself you know, and offer you the business. So always think, you know, the way you represent the business. Is it the best way? So importance of the body language, of smile. You know, people, it doesn't cost a penny, but it can make the change in the way uh, your prospect reacts. What you're wearing, etc. the way you're presenting. Are you a business-like or are you uh, not that business-like? Also, never impose your agenda on somebody else because that will just create friction. Your job is to educate them or let them know what you have to offer 
and help them to make an educated decision. Now it's not up to you to drag them screaming and kicking and to convince them you know that this business is a good business. Now I'm sure you know this business is a terrific business but it's not up to you to convince them of that. Your job is to present the business to let them know what you've got to offer and it's up to them to decide whether they like it or not, whether they're going to join this business or not. It's up to them. Okay, so we need to let others know about our business. Now the worst thing that you can do is withhold the information about the business opportunity you ha because you have a chance to change their lives. You know, some people when they first start the business they say, oh, I don't really feel confident about telling others about the business or I don't know how they're going to react, how they're going to look at me when I offer them the business, uh, you know, are they going to think, you know, I'm too salesman like or whatever. The main thing is that if you don't tell somebody about this business opportunity, you just rob them of an opportunity to change their own lives. Now, whether they're going to like it or not, whether they're going to join it or not, whether they're going to do something or not, is up to them really, it's not up to you. But if you don't even tell them about this business opportunity, that means you prevent any of that happening. You prevent them from changing their life. So the most important thing here is not to prejudge people. You know, when I first started, I always used to think, you know, oh, no, that person is lazy, you know, they're not even going to be interested in the business, I'm not going to tell them. And that person, they earn a lot of money already, so they're not going to be interested, etc. And this way, I would disqualify half of people before I've spoken to them. Only to realize that the people that I thought will be the best in this business done the worst. And the people that I thought will be useless became the best leaders in my team. So this is how you need to uh, think about this business. You need to tell everybody, you know, what you have to offer and, you know, you'll be amazed how many people will be interested. So do that, you know, always. If you, you know, uh, can just speak to everybody about this business and let everybody know and let them decide. It doesn't have to be, you know, five-hour presentation, but just let them know what you're doing as soon as you can, you know. As soon as you meet them, just let them know what you're doing and let them decide. If they'll be interested, they'll ask more. Okay, so some prospecting strategies. The first uh, strategy is a questionnaire. Now again, some uh, uh, people uh, use different types of questionnaires, but this is just one of the examples. So that's the question you would ask a person. When would you like to retire? Now most people will say, well, well I'm 65, and then you need to say, look, look, not when are you going to retire, but when would you like to retire? And most people will start thinking then. They'll say, well, I don't know, maybe in five years or so. And then the next question that follows that would be, what is your plan to achieve this then? And most people will have no plan. And that's the problem. They want to retire, they want a better life, but they haven't got a plan for it. They'll go, oh, maybe I'll win a lottery. Well, that is not really a plan, is it? So then you can ask them, you know, is your plan to get a pay rise or maybe save enough money to retire? What, what, what is your plan? You know, what is your strategy? Now, for most people, neither of those are not going to happen. And that's a problem again. Now, our answer is that FM Group has a plan for you. So FM Group can actually offer a plan to you, a strategy, how within a couple of years' time you can retire. You can replace your current income with a residual income that will come with not that much of efforts putting in uh, by doing the business and this is what we can offer. Now another question would be how much money do you need every month to retire and again the person will come up with the figure that suits them you know so it might be thousand pounds, two thousand pounds, three thousand pounds or whatever that is. Now there is a rule of 200 where we can say well if you want a two thousand pounds a month to retire and if you wanted to get that in interest I mean you would have to have about four hundred thousand pounds in your bank account. Now what is the chance that you're going to be saving that within the next three, four, five years or so? For most people not really an option. They're not going to save four hundred thousand pounds into their bank account within the next couple of years. However, two thousand pounds a month uh, in commission from FM is not that great amount of money to be honest with you. It's really really possible and it's really really manageable. within three, four years time, I think, you know, most people can achieve something like that and 
it'll be a lot easier than saving four hundred thousand uh, pounds from your bank account. Also, something like you know, I bet you would like to learn the skills to build a long-term residual income. Now, most people don't even know what residual income means, which is great because then we can explain to them. So they'll say, "Oh, what is residual income?" Well, let me explain to you. And then you can explain what is residual income. Some of the easiest explanations that I found is the one with the pop stars. They always say, you know, look, singers get residual income. They create a song, they sing it once, they record it on a CD, and then every time somebody buys the CD or somebody uh, goes and uses that song um, on the radio or in advertisement or in a film, these people receive money, which means that they've done something once, but they get paid for that effort forever. Now, in a job, you don't get that because your uh, salary is reset every month. So even though you worked very hard last month, unless you do the same this month, you're not going to get paid. In this business, you get residual income, which means that the effort you invest this month, you'll get paid this month for it, but also next month and next month and next month and next month and next month. This is how it works. So you do something once, but you get paid forever. And that's what we like about it. So we can show you how to do it if you'd like to learn that. Also, how to beat the cold feet uh, when your prospect returns home and talks to the dream stealers. Now, that's a really, really uh, serious topic. A lot of people get cold feet. You know, they come to your meeting or your presentation, etc., and they listen to it, and they're really excited, and they're uh, really positive about the business and everything, and then they go home, and next day you're trying to call them. They're not even picking up the phone. Now, what happened there is your prospect has spoken to your dream stealer. And dream stealers, most of the time, they are family, friends, you know, r closest, you know, work colleagues, etc. Now, these people, they don't know they are dream stealers. And they don't know they are doing something bad because they do it out of love. They love these people and they don't want them to get, to get hurt. And they talk them out of, the, out of the business. They talk them out of it. Even though your prospect comes back home and says, wow, I've seen these people, you know, making 16,000 pounds a month, getting free Mercedes and all that. And the person will go, oh dear, you've been in one of those schemes. You're not going to achieve it. You're not going to succeed. This is not for you. And they talk them out of it. And now what happens? And it's, it's, it's understandable because most people have never done any business in their life. All they did is working for somebody else. And they think that others should do the same thing. So how do we tackle this uh, cold feet uh, phenomenon? Now we tackle it with a story about five apes. And I always tell that to people that uh, I'm not sure about when they're going to get home. Now the story of five apes is a really nice story and it's actually a true story. Where scientists put five apes in a cage, they put a stairwell in a cage too and they put a banana on the top of the stair. Now obviously a few minutes pass, one of the uh, Apes sees the banana, tries to go up the stairs, but here uh, the scientists uh, start the fire hose and spray this monkey all the way down the stairs with uh, freezing cold water and spray all the other monkeys with the freezing cold water. A couple of minutes passes, the other monkey tries to do the same and the scientists repeat the procedure. They spray it down the stairs and spray the rest of the monkeys with the freezing cold water. Now when the third monkey tries to go up the stairs to get the banana, the other four grabs it, drags it downstairs and beats it up. Now, they don't want to be sprayed with the freezing cold water anymore, and that's understandable too. But, however, what scientists do now, they take one monkey out of the cage and put a new one in. Now, this new uh, monkey, obviously, sees the banana, tries to go up the stairs, but the other four grabs it, drags it downstairs, and beats it up. Now, the problem is that this new monkey have no idea why that happened. That monkey have no clue why the other monkeys have dragged it downstairs and beat it up. However, it happens, it happens, and there's nothing you can do. And what they do, they take the other person out. Uh, well, they're the monkey out. And they put a second new monkey. And obviously, the second new monkey tries to go up the stairs, the others drag it down, etc. Basically, they do the same thing all the time until there's only one of the original five monkeys left in the cage. And they take the last monkey out of it and put the fifth new monkey in there. Now that fifth new monkey tries to go up the stairs to get the banana, but the other four grabs it, drags it downstairs and beats it up. Now the problem is that none of those four monkeys have ever been sprayed with the freezing cold water. They just were grabbed and dragged downstairs by other monkeys previously. 
And if you were to ask those monkeys, why are you doing that, or why aren't you going up the stairs to pick up the banana, they would just go, well, it's always been like that. And this is how people see network marketing. Because their grandfather worked all their life and retired for peanuts, then their father worked all their life and retired for peanuts, that means they have to work all their life and retire for peanuts. That's the way they realize. That's the way they think. Because it's always been like that. You know, how many uh, network marketing millionaires do you know? How many people do you know who retired by doing network marketing? Obviously because 99% probably of population go to work, they don't realize that there is a small but, uh, but a strong fraction of uh, population who actually do retire from work by doing network marketing. But you need to tell them and need to explain to them that there is other ways of earning money, not just by going to the J-O-B, you know, the just over broke. Also, there are free keys to sponsoring. In order to sponsor somebody, that person need to know you, need to trust you, and need to like you. Now, sometimes you need to achieve those really, really fast. If you're sponsoring somebody on the street or on the bus or on the train, you have to achieve all of those in a very short space of time. However, in order to be successful, you have to achieve those. Because if the person doesn't know you, they don't trust you or they don't like you, it's a really, really small chance that you will sponsor them. Now, what I mean they need to know you, they don't need to know you since childhood. However, they need to understand where you're coming from, what type of person you are, etc. I always say to people, you need to remember that if you sponsor that person, that person needs to see in you a person that will help them, that will guide them in this business. So if they don't know you enough and they don't believe that you will help them in this business, why will they join you? So you always need to think about those three things and how you can achieve those. So be warm, smile, make others feel comfortable around you. If you're a likable person, you, you'll attract a lot of people around you. However, if you uh, are not that likable, if you're not that approachable, then people will not be that uh, inclined to join you or your business. Now, communication skills are vital in this business, since we always say that this is a people's business. We talk to people, we guide people, etc. So, obviously, communication skills are really, really important. So, one thing which is very useful to know, that in order to participate and take control of the conversation, people have to disagree with you. Now, this, for some people, might be a new thing. You might have not heard about it. But if you think about it, it's really, really true. Because when we speak to people, think about when you have conversations with your group of friends or whatever. You know, and somebody says, oh, I think, you know, I don't know, Emmerdale is the best soap. And everybody would just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then another person goes, I think Mercedes is the best car in the world. And everybody would just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that sound like a usual conversation that you have? Mm, I don't think so. In most cases, what happens, person will go, yeah, but... Uh, Audi is a lot more efficient or yes but you know I love Coronation Street too. People have to disagree with you in order to participate and take control of the conversation and we can use this to our own advantage. So one of the questions we might ask a person, we might say well what do you do for a living? And it doesn't really matter what a person says. I do this, that or the other etc. And then we can use the knowledge we just learned. So we might say wow that must be a great job and in order to participate and take control of the conversation, what will the person do? They will disagree with you. I'll say, yeah, but it's a lot of hours, or uh, yeah, but I hate my boss, or yes, but there's some things that I don't like to do. People will start disagreeing by doing something that you want them to do, by talking badly about the job. Or you might say, wow, that must be a great way of making lots of money. And again, most people will go, nah, not really, you know, I don't earn that much, etc. And they will start disagreeing with you because that's the way it happens. That's the conversation. And once they do that, obviously you can say, well, FM can help you to earn some money, you know, or FM can help you uh, to get out of that job. Now, some people will actually say, well, I do like my job and it is a great way of earning a lot of money. And 
it's really not our job to get them out of uh, you know the employment that they like. So that's where comes our second uh, question, and we then ask them, what would you like to do on your free time, or what do you like to do on your free time? And most people will go, mm, yeah, I like to go fishing every weekend, you know, or I like to spend time with my family uh, and children, you know, during the weekend, etc. And then you can say, wow, you know, I great, I, I bet that's good, but FM or network marketing can help you to do that more often. How about going fishing five days a week and only having to work on the weekend? For most people, that will be a good thing. So this is, again, the way you can start these conversations and you can talk to your prospects. Now, introverts can also do very well in network marketing. Very often people say, oh, but I'm shy, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm not that good at conversationalist, etc. And uh, will I do well in this business? Well, people really like those who listen to them. Because most of the time, nobody listens to them. Everybody has so much things to say, they don't have time to listen to anybody anymore. And when you actually listen, when you actually listen and pay attention to what a person says, and remember those things afterwards, people will really build a relationship with you. They'll really like you for that. So use that to your advantage. Ask open-ended questions, you know, and listen to people. So when you ask open-ended questions, these are not the questions that end by yes or no. These are questions that people can talk to you about, you know, so saying, you know, why would you like to earn additional income? And let them talk about it. Let them explain why would they need that extra cash or et cetera, you know, how would you build your team? How, you know, he said, and let them say, now they might not be saying the right things and you'll teach them afterwards how to do the right things. However, let them talk and try and get to know them well. Also, there's some uh, sentence starters like these, for example, uh, if there was a way, whoops, what happened here, not quite sure, make this full screen, okay, if there was a way for you to make more money, have more time with your family and not have to commute every day, would you like to know about it? Or have you ever heard of network marketing? And what do you know about it? Or what is the most important reason for you to earn extra money? So like I said, these questions will get people talking. You know, finding out if a person been in network marketing or heard about it before is absolutely essential because you never know. You know, just presuming that a person have never heard of it can land you in big trouble because if the person been with, with network marketing before, they might have the skills and knowledge, etc. So they might be already ready-made leader for you. Also, leadership skills. You know, allow people to be at the comfort zone. You don't have to push them out of it straight away. So use their natural advantage uh, of your team members. You know, some people are really good over the phone. Some people are good face-to-face. -face. Some people are awesome at internet marketing. Some people are great with advertisement, etc. Some people are natural born, you know, party uh, hosts, etc. And use that. Tell them that there's various ways they can do this business and let them use um, the comfort zone to begin with. Afterwards, you can help them to get out of that comfort zone and experience different things. Okay, let's have a look at the leadership skill. Now, we need to help others to see the positive side of life. It's absolutely essential for you as a leader to be able to help your team members to look at the good things in life, you know. And some people have problems all their lives. And unfortunately, we can't solve all our distributor problems. And that's really just unfortunate. Uh, so we need to let people have their opinions instead of trying to educate them to our opinion because that will just cause friction. All we need to do is let them know, you know, what we think about it. So we need to remember that every problem is an opportunity in disguise. Like um, one of the uh, things that uh, I've heard previously is where um, a new distributor calls his sponsor and says, look, you know, I'm trying to order these products and they're out of stock. You know, I can't get enough products, etc. So what sort of company is this, you know? They can't even supply enough products on time, etc. Et and the pr person starts complaining. You now what the, the uh, actual sponsor says is really genius. He says, well, when that happens to me, I go back to my customer and say, look, our products are so high in demand, we can't really get enough of them. And the product that you actually ordered, we're out of stock already. 
So what I suggest next time, you buy two bottles of it straight away in order, you know, if, in case we run out again, etc. So it's the way you see, it's the same situation, but somebody might see it as a disaster, somebody might see it as a free advertisement and free opportunity to say how good our products are. So always try and see the positive side of things, you know. It doesn't really pay to be negative about things. Just be positive, enjoy life, enjoy what you do, you know. The business uh, can be good uh, if you make it good. Also, it's absolutely important to know what you want from the business. Now, I seriously doubt that uh, there's anybody here, you know, in this business who just came, you know, for three pounds eighty that you make from selling a bottle of classic collection, you know, or whatever. Because that's not going to change anybody's life. You need to know the reason why are you in this uh, business. And one of the examples uh, that uh, I've heard used was a pile of dirt example where uh, somebody wakes up in the morning and there's a massive pile of dirt in the backyard and they are told that they need to you know get that pile of dirt moved you know and people will find any excuses possible you know they'll go oh yes but you know it's raining outside so I can't do it today and you know the JCB you know is out of petrol you know and I can't do it either etc so they'll just be looking for excuses However, if uh, the same pile of dirt is here and there's your child next to that pile and you see that the dirt is starting to uh, fall on this child, that person wouldn't really care about the rain or JCB or anything. They would get out there and dig that child out with their hands because they just had a motivator put in, the, in that place. The motivator, obviously, in this case is a child. However, people have different motivators. So you always need to ask the person, what is the reason for you to be in this business, you know, and everyone should ask themselves really as well, you know, why am I working so hard to build this business, why am I investing time to build this network marketing, um, you know, empire for myself, you know, is it just for the sake of it, or is it for something more important, you know, is it family, is it education, is it charity, is it traveling the world, whatever it is your reason, you know, I can't put a reason in your head, you know, every one of us have our own reasons. However, unless you concentrate on the reason, unless you know the reason, and at least unless your team members concentrate on their reasons, it's really, really hard to be to stay motivated. You know, the commitment um, is described as doing things you've done before after the initial excitement has gone, and you know that initial excitement will go for everybody. So you need to know what is the reason that keeps you going, keeps you moving forwards. You know, what will keep you motivated six months from now, a year from now, what will keep you passionate about this business. Also, training doesn't always work. Even though uh, we might have lots of training events, lots of uh, webinars, etc., not all training works. The reason for that is that people are horrible at using things that they learn. So sometimes distributors actually have to go out there and experience it by themselves. And that's something that I always encourage my team members. I always say, whatever training you've heard, whatever things you've written down, whatever you did, it's useless unless you put it to work. And you have to put it to work. Anything you learn, you have to practice it. Unless you practice it, you're not going to become better at it. You know, once you try the first time, anything you try for the first time, you're probably not going to be awesome at it. However, if you do that again and again and again and again, you will get better and better at it. One of the uh, reasons, uh, well, examples for that, we uh, sometimes say, well, describe a taste of chocolate. And how would you describe a taste of chocolate to somebody who have never tried chocolate in their life? What would you say? Well, it's bitter, but it's also sweet. You know, it's, it's quite hard, but it also melts in your mouth. You know, you say, how would you describe it? It would be really, really difficult. The person would, wouldn't really understand what does it taste like, because it tastes like chocolate, right? But you need to try it in order to know how it tastes. Or, you know, how would you describe uh, what is the feeling in love? You know, if the person never been in love, how would you describe that? Well, you see everything through these, uh, you know, pink glasses. You have, you are a little dizzy, you know, and you are really happy, but sometimes sad as well, etc., etc. And, you know, the person might say, well, okay, so if I bang you with a hammer over the head, you'll become dizzy, you'll start, you know, your vision will blur. So that's pretty much like you feel in love. And nah, not really. It doesn't really feel like that. However, again, how would you explain 
unless the person actually went out there and experienced the love firsthand. You know, or learning to uh, swim. You know, there is two ways of learning to swim, a wet method and uh, a dry method. You can learn to swim by going to swimming classes where your trainer puts you in a swimming pool every day, etc. And you learn bit by bit how to move your hands and legs and everything in the pool whilst he's holding you and you learn how to swim. Now the other example is a dry learning where you can get all the books about swimming, read all about swimming, etc. And by the end of, you know, when you finish reading all these books, you should be, you know, a super swimmer. But will you be that confident to jump in the pool after reading those books? I seriously doubt that. You need practice, right? So you need to get out there and experience. In the same way, you need to get your distributors out there, get your team members and experience things, how network marketing works. So I've mentioned earlier on that uh, most people do network marketing, but they don't get paid for it. Now, the way I show my team members uh, this thing, I might take my team member with me and when we are standing outside the building or we're going on the bus, I would ask the bus driver in the presence of my uh, team member, I would ask the bus driver, I would say, uh, listen, what's the best restaurant in this area? And the driver normally will go, oh, yeah, yeah, but there's this, uh, you know, McDonald's around the corner or there's this Indian restaurant just, just over there, you know, it's really good, you know, the prices are reasonable, etc. And the person would start, you know, giving me all this advertising. And when we get off the bus, I would say to my team member, look, what did just happen here? This, this driver of the bus just recommended this restaurant. He just done a massive ad on it, and we'll go there and we'll spend our money in that restaurant. But will that driver get anything for it? Nope, not even a penny. However, he'd done a great job advertising it and recommending it to us, so we could go and spend money there, but he's not going to get anything for it. Now, in network marketing, you do exactly the same, but you start picking up money for it. Every time somebody buys a product, every time somebody joins the business and does well in business, you earn money forever. And this is the way you would show to person, you know, through experience. And making a good offer is vitally important. So how do you present your business? Do you say, give me 50 quid and you can be a distributor? Does that sound like a good uh, business offer to you? Not really, is it? Or do you say, well, when you join our business, for $49.99, you'll get a sure start success kit containing a complete set of 160 perfume samples, a detailed marketing plan that gives you a comprehensive color of our compensation plan, five catalogs, six registration forms, FM DVD, two receipt pads, 25 party invitations, fragrance strips, 10 opportunity leaflets, and one fragrance wallet. Now, does that sound like a better offer? Well, it's, uh, both are the same things, both are the 50 quid for the distributor kit. However, the way you present it can make all the difference. Now, a lot of people take it for granted. They think because they know what's in sample kit that the prospect will know, but most of the time prospect doesn't know. And you need to be explicit about it. Tell them what they get for that 50 pounds. I mean, 50 pounds is a good pair of jeans, but with this, you know, or uh, you know, Chinese takeaway. But here, you actually explain to them that they get quite a lot, actually. They get everything they need to start this business on the right foot for just 50 quid. Evaluating your progress. Again, if you don't evaluate your progress, if you don't have timetables, if you don't look over your timetables at the end of the week, you're running around like a headless chicken. You need some sort of order in your business. And there is a five-step formula that we call uh, or a 10,000 formula. Now, the reason it works, it has five things in this formula. First thing, a pound sign is the number of people you speak to. And again, it's a scale of 1 to 10. The second one, the heart, is how much people like you. So are you a likable person or do people hate you? Q is the quality of people you speak to. Now, I know I said in the beginning that we don't uh, find prospects, we create them. However, obviously, if you're speaking to somebody who lives in a cardboard box, they might not be the best distributor in the world. You know, except, so you need to think what sort of people you're speaking to. Are they business-minded? Are they, you know, already looking for something, etc.? S is your skills. So how much have you learned of this business? How much have you learned of your company? How much have you learned of your product? How many trainings and webinars have you attended? Are you investing regular time in yourself to learn the new skills of how to speak to people, what to say, how to say it, how to sell, how to build a team, etc. And the last one is the scale. 
It's the way you see yourself. It's your self-image. Do you think that, yes, I, you know, I, I am worth a lot more than I'm being paid now. I am a person with you know, a much bigger potential than what I actually use right now. I can become a better person. Or are you one of those people who put themselves down all the time? We say, ah, oh, my English is not good enough. Ah, oh, I'm too shy. You know, I couldn't do this. I couldn't learn it, etc. So the way you see yourself, as you can see, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 can equal to 100,000. Now, what is your score? It can be going from 1, maybe it's 5, maybe it's 10, etc. So you need to think, how can I evaluate myself? You know, what, what score is mine? And for most people, they're not going to be 100,000. I know I'm not 100,000, and I always progress towards that 100,000. However, as you can see, I said that the scale is from 1 to 10. It cannot be a 0. Because you know, if you multiply anything by 0, you get a 0. So if you have 0 in any one of these 5, categories, then it doesn't matter. You can be 10 on the rest of them. If you have a zero in one place, then the result and result will be zero. You know, you can be the most likable person and, you know, you might have the best skills in the world and you might think of yourself very highly. However, if the number of people you speak to is zero, then your business will be equal to zero because it's not going to grow. Or even if you speak to hundreds of people, but you've got no skills, again, it'll be a zero. So you need to think, you need to be at least one or all of them. But you need to work to increase, increase, improve them all the time. Now the next thing is the power of stories. Now we heard lots of stories when we were children and stories are really, really powerful. People remember stories and that can serve to our own advantage. So the advantage of being in network marketing and again, we can give people stories. Well, we might say, well, you know how you go to Tesco and you shop and you collect your club card points? And the person will go, yes, yes. And you know how you collect all of these points for so while, etc., and then you get a five pounds voucher afterwards? A person goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you collect points in this business, you collect Mercedes instead. And that's how, you know, you, by giving the stories, you can explain to the person how this business works or residual income, like I've um, explained earlier on, you know, about rock and roll uh, stars, you know, who create song and get paid forever. And we can explain by using these stories. Now, people are much better at remembering stories than just simple facts, you know, or overcoming that I couldn't do that attitude, you know, giving them a two-year story. Now, two-year story is a really, really nice story, and I use it quite often. Um, in two-year story, we um, say to the person, now, imagine this. Imagine you go to work today and your boss comes to you and says, I've got a bad news for you. Our uh, company is downsizing and unfortunately we're going to have to let you go. And obviously you, you earn decent money so you get upset straight away. You think, Jesus, you know what I'm going to do? How am I going to provide my family? How am I going to find another job that will pay me a um, similar amount of money to this job, etc.? And you obviously start worrying. But then the boss says, well, there is one thing actually. And obviously, you listen up straight away. And the boss says, well, look, if you do uh, one hour overtime every day for five days in a week for free without being paid for it, so you're still being paid for your normal hours, but you do this one hour overtime for free without getting paid every single day for two years in a row, you can keep your job. Would you, would you take that deal? And most people would. They would think, well, you know, how fast, you know, how, how long it will take me to get another job? Probably it's not going to pay me as well as this job anyway. So I might as well keep this job and just do that hour at the end of every day. You know, don't get paid for it, but I still keep my job. I still get my salary. And most people will agree with that. Now, what your boss says next is the best thing. He says, oh, but I've got some good news as well. Now, if you decide to do that, if you decide to invest that one hour a day for five days a week for two years in a row, after those two years, you can retire at full pay. Now, how about that? I'm sure that would be the best day of your life, not the worst day anymore. Yeah? So you do one hour free overtime every day for two years uh, in a row, and then you can retire at full pay. That would be great, wouldn't it? Now, network marketing is very, very similar to that. Now, most of us, when we start doing network marketing, 
we started as a part-time. We have our job that we do Monday to Friday and we use our spare time, our free time, in order to build this business. And even if you invest an hour every day for five days a week, for two years, you will receive an income, you'll, you will receive results beyond your imagination. Just one hour a day for five days a week for two years in a row. You can, you would do fantastically in this business if you committed to that. However, most people will not commit to that. As soon as they know that they work for themselves, they'll find all the excuses in the world not to do something, not to work hard for themselves, not to build their business. But that's what you need. The only thing you need is one hour a day. You know, very often people say, oh, you know, how much time should I invest in this business, etc. And I always say, instead of investing 10 hours on Saturday, you invest one hour a day instead. Because then you'll build this routine, you'll build this discipline that you need to spend some time with the business all the time, every single day. And in two years' time, if you invested one hour a day, you could learn how to play a piano. And this business is 10 times easier than playing piano. So two years' story really takes... It puts person's mind in the right place because very often people want to become millionaires in a week and that's not going to happen. And you need to make sure that these people realize that they're not going to be making 16,000 pounds next week. You know, it will take time and will take effort. If you say the story, the people will then realize how this business actually works. It will be a lot of time investment and there will not be that much money to begin with. They're not going to see these big checks coming straight through the door. However, if they carry on investing that time, those big checks will come through. It will take, you know, the time will come and it will come through. Okay. The next slide is called, oh really? How does that work? Now, first thing uh, that quite a lot of distributors are really um, finding problematic is the question when somebody asks them, oh, how much money did you get paid in your first month? Or, you know, how much money... Uh, you got paid this month, etc. And people get really, really frustrated with this question because obviously when you first start network marketing business for the next couple of months, maybe even for the first year, the money is not that great really because you're only doing it part time. And you know, when somebody asks me how much money I made in my first month, I'm quite honest with them. And I don't have the problem with this question because I say, well, I don't know because I haven't finished collecting it all yet. And most of the time after that, people go, oh really? How does that work? So I got them interested already, right? And then you can explain to them, well, we get a residual income. What does that mean? That means in my first month, I introduced five people to this business. I trained them how to do the business. They went out, sold lots of product, uh, and I've earned my commission, right? But the next month, what they did, they did the same, plus they have sponsored new people into the business. And I've earned again, and the third month, and the fourth month, and the fifth month. However, the effort I invested was in the first month. So even today, two years down the line from when I first started the business, I'm still being paid today for something I've, that I've done in my first month. So I can't really tell how much money I made in my first month because I'm still collecting it today. And it's a really great way of answering this question. Another question is, what do you do for a living? Now, when people ask that, they get confused. You know, do I tell them, you know, what I do my full-time job, or do I tell them about network marketing? How do you explain network marketing if they don't understand, etc., etc.? And they find it really difficult. Now, I always say that whatever you say to that question, whatever your answer is, the reaction should be, "Oh, really? How does that work?" So, when people ask me, "What do you do for a living?" I say something like that. Well, I show people how to be to buy three bottles of perfume for the um, one bottle price they paid before. Or I show people how to sack their boss. Or I show people how to pick up an extra paycheck every month. And most people will say, well, how does that work? And then they actually are asking for a presentation. So I don't really have to force them into presentation. They are asking for one. And if they ask, it's rude to refuse. So I give them the presentation then. How to lead your business. Again, one of the questions I get uh, sometimes from new distributors, they say, well, what do you do? You know, do you lead with the product or do you lead with the opportunity? Are you selling the product or are you building the business? You know, are you building the team? What do you do? Now, I always say that I lead with a common sense. Because if the person I met, I say, well, life's really beautiful for me. I'm doing really great, etc., etc. You know, I'm earning lots of money, etc. So I'll say, well, I'm sure if you're earning a lot of money, you'd like the best quality stuff, right? 
And the person will say, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then I would go, did you know that the perfumes you buy off the high street are really diluted? It's only eau de toilette. And you pay really a lot of money for it. Well, what we offer is exclusive product, which is perfume for women. And we've got perfume for men too. And then the person will buy a product of me. However, if I meet with a person and they say, oh, I'm really struggling with my bills, my credit cards, you know, up to the max, etc. I'm not going to go, oh, would you like to buy some perfume then from me? I'll go, well, I've got an opportunity for you, I think. I think you can earn a few hundred pounds a month easily uh, by doing what I do. And I will offer them the business. So always lead with the common sense. Also, I turn my customers into uh, my business associates too. So once the person uses the product, I say, you know, when next time they come for an order, I might say, look, you know, I appreciate you buying this perfume off me and letting me earn the money. However, I'd like you to earn this money too. And you could do that by just joining the company. And even if you buy for yourself, you're still going to be earning. And this way, again, I offer them the business and they can join my team. Word pictures. Now, word pictures are like stories. A story that keeps, um, that stays in a person's mind. And they're really, really nice stories. So, one of the things you'll hear sometimes when people... They want to say no, really, when you gave them the opportunity presentation, but they will say, I want to think it over. I need to think about it. Most of the time that means no. It's just they are too scared to say no. So they'll, think, they'll say, I need to think over. And what you need to say? Well, you need to use a word picture. You need to say, great, please, think it over. Take your time. By the way, could you do me a favor? And person, because they want to get rid of you, they'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. You know, what, what's the favor? And then you give them a worse picture. You say, look, when you get your next page slip, what I want you to do is actually to have a look at that page slip. You know, rub it between your fingers, raise it, you know, to the light, look at the figure it has on the page slip and think to yourself, you know, is that all I'm really worth? That's it. And let the person go. Now, word pictures are really great because they will pop up when they least expect them. So a month will pass, etc., and then they'll get their paycheck. And guess what they will start thinking? They'll look at the payslip, they'll look at the figure on the payslip, and they'll start thinking, is that really all I'm really worth, etc. Another great uh, word picture for this case, when you say, oh, great, please think it over, take your time. But by the way, could, could you do me a favor? You know, you might say, well, when you get up, you know, uh, next time, you know, when you get up at 6 in the morning, and get in that car, you know, and you start traveling, you know, going for all that morning traffic, you know, trying to get to work. Uh, have a look around in your car and think to yourself, you know, is this my dream car? Is that, you know, what I want to do day in, day out? And that's it. And you leave the person with that. And guess what happens the next time they get stuck in traffic going to work? They'll start thinking, is that really my dream car? Is that what I want to do every day for the rest of my life? Maybe the opportunity he told me about isn't that bad. Maybe I should have a chat with him again. He said, so word pictures get stuck in people's mind. And they do very, very good tricks. So going to work, getting payslip, these are the nice stories. The next uh, uh, word picture is about painting a picture to the person's mind. What will happen when they join your business? So you might say, look, when you join our business, here's what happens. You know, you'll start working, you'll invest some time, etc. You'll do uh, bits and pieces, and then you'll see that the money will start coming through, etc. And then you'll reach the point where you will be getting so much money, you know, you, you just can't afford to go to work anymore. So what you'll have to do, you'll have to go to your uh, boss, you know, and you'll walk into your boss's office, and you sit, you know, in front of his desk, you know, you'll put your feet on his desk and say, listen, I haven't got any time on my timetable to fit you in anymore. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave this job. And then, obviously, you'll leave the boss's office, you go to your work desk, you collect your stuff, put it in your box, you know, say bye-bye uh, and wave your hand to all those work colleagues who said that you'll never uh, succeed and you'll never make it, etc. And then proudly walk out of the uh, your work and get in your new Mercedes, put the box in the back, you know, get in your uh, new uh, C-class or S-class Mercedes, you know, they breathe in deeply, feel the new uh, smell of leather in your brand new Mercedes, and then you drive back home, you know, and you, uh, it's still, you know, 12 o'clock 
in the afternoon, you know, it's still early, you get back home, you know, you open a fridge, get yourself the best uh, drink, uh, you know, that you like, grab a seat in, a, in your favorite armchair, open the drink, you know, have a sip and think that, hmm, it did really feel as good as I thought it will. And that's a word picture. You paint something like that in person's mind, they'll stick to them. They'll stick to them. And that's something that they can actually imagine, that they can see themselves doing that, you know, a year from now, two years from now, etc. That's not going to happen overnight, but they can see themselves. They can see themselves achieving those dreams, and it's vitally important. Or other things are when you use a product, there's what happens, you know, and you put this fantastic perfume, and it smells a lot stronger, and it smells a lot better. When you get out there, you know, people actually notice it, you know, they notice you more, etc. You know, and when you wear our pheromones perfume, it makes you feel better, it makes you more confident, it attracts opposite sex, etc. So you need to paint the picture in person's mind. And word pictures are extremely strong. Sometimes it's just a couple of words, but it's, it sticks to person's mind. You know, when I say Sean Connery, or when I say Marilyn Monroe, you don't see, you know, M-A-R-I-L-N-Y. What you see is that blonde lady with her skirt flying all over the place, etc. That's a word picture. Marilyn Monroe is a word picture. People know what is associated with that, and that's what word pictures do. The next important thing is closing. How do you close? And very often people will talk and talk and talk and talk till cows come home, hoping that that prospect will give up and raise their hand and will say, okay, where do I sign? Okay, just give me that product, I'll buy it off you. you know, but that never happens. And if you carry on talking, you'll just carry on. So what you need to do is learn how to stop. And all you need to do is close. So there can be aggressive closing, like, do you see anything here that you couldn't do? Or so, when would you like to start? So these are a bit more aggressive, but sometimes it works very well. Or you can have a little bit of uh, uh, giving them a little bit of freedom of choice, saying, well, what do you think? Or, and that's it. And the rest is up to you. So things like that, you know, learn how to close. You know, and I'm sometimes still terrible of it, you know. But normally, you know, when you give an opportunity presentation to somebody, when you tell somebody about the business, don't be afraid of that final answer. Just stop there, you know, you gave the, you, once you see that you gave them enough information to say, well, what do you think? Or if somebody attended an opportunity meeting with you, after the opportunity meeting, don't be scared. Just say, what do you think? You know, would you like to join or do you, do you not like it, etc. Because there's no way of hiding behind anything, you know. The person either likes it or doesn't. If they doesn't like it, there's no, you know, reason to waste the time. If they like it, then you might as well get on with it. Get the registration form started, you know, get them uh, sample kitted and all that, and you can start them training. Now, would it be nice to get appointments 100% of the time? I'm sure you would. Now, you might say, boy, do I have an opportunity for you. I could give a complete presentation, but it would take an entire minute. When could you set aside a whole minute? Now, the problem that most people uh, come across is that people are fed up with presentations, with 10-hour presentation with all the bits and pieces shown, etc. However, what if you ask them for just one minute? How many people do you think would say, well, what about now? One minute is not that much, right? Now, when you give them the first presentation, the one that just to get them interested, he only needs to answer seven questions. What kind of business are you in? What is your company? What is your product? What training do you provide? How much does it cost to get started? How much money can I make? And what do I need to do? That's the seven things that need to be answered. And can you do it in one minute? Well, let's give it a try. Well, we are in network marketing industry. Do you know anything about it? Well, the company is called FM Group and it's based in Poland and we've been uh, in UK for five years now. We offer high quality perfume, cosmetics and home products for the third of the high street prices as we don't invest in advertising, celebrity reimbursements or expensive packaging. We provide two types of training. Part one, the classroom training where people can attend presentations, training events, conferences, read books and CDs. And part two, on the job training or two-on-one -on -one presentations where we help you to do the presentation and you learn by sitting next to them. When you join our business, for $49.99, you will get blah, 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 how I said what you, they get for $49.99.
you can make around 100 200 pounds a month from your uh, from your retail profit when you start by building your own uh, network marketing business and you can earn up to 16,000 pounds a month within maybe five years of starting the business all you need to do is don't change continue to recommend and promote things like you always have done just like promoting movies restaurants and music also out of all the people you meet who think the same way about this business as you do you can choose few uh, who would like to earn the extra money you might select a few and sponsor them by showing how to do the same as you did and guess what you get a bonus for that too and that's it that's your one minute presentation now you can change and tweak it uh, to suit you but that's all it takes so sometimes you only need to get the person interested get them that feeling oh wow how does that work and once they're interested to say look I haven't got now the time to explain all of it but if you come to the opportunity meeting I'll be more than happy to show you how we earn the money you know or how we could help you with your current situation and that's all you need to do get them interested I keep teaching that to my distributors I keep teaching that uh, to all the team leaders I always say never ever do presentations over the phone or over email or whatever that is always invite people to opportunity meetings or you know um, a meeting just you know at your house or the coffee table and speak to them face to face because when you speak to them over the phone or uh, via you know emails etc you can't see their face you can't see the way they react to the information you do I mean I've been in this business for two years and even I wouldn't do the presentation over the phone I'd always meet with the person if I have a chance now you might say well what happens if I have a team member you know or a new prospect who lives thousands of miles from here you know across the Atlantic or whatever great you know nowadays we've got Skype we've got live conferencing tools etc where we can set up a camera and everything we can see the person at the end and have a chat with them they can see us we can have a chat with them etc so the possibilities are there you just need to use them and obviously you need to think like a business person not like an employee anymore so thinking like an employee or like a business now what's the difference then well uh, there's this conveyor belt example where uh, there is this factory, they have a conveyor belt and there's lots of workers, but there's one worker who works really, really, really well. And uh, one day, you know, the owner of the factory, he comes down on the shop floor, he grabs this guy and says, oh, um, come outside with me for a second. And they come outside, you know, and he says, well, um, I, I, I guess you know that you are the best worker that I have in this factory. You know, he goes, you are the most hard, hardest working person in this factory. And now you see that hill up there, you know, and the, the guy uh, working in the factory goes, yeah, 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 I can see that hill. And he goes, well, one day on that hill will stand a massive house, massive mansion with 10 bedrooms, you know, so many bathrooms, etc., with a massive uh, garage with six uh, brand new cars, etc., etc. And that house will be all mine because you work so hard. And that is the employee uh, philosophy. Because if you work... You know, very often I hear people saying, oh, I'm not a business person, you know, I'd rather work in a job. But what people don't realize that you are in the business you want it or not. You're either in the business for yourself or you're building a business for somebody else. So if you've got a job, that means you are building a business for your boss. The owner of the company that you work for will build a business and will be a successful and buy that massive house and live very well because of your effort. Now, if you join FM and do the business in FM, you build a business for yourself. So you're in business irrespectively, it's just your choice whether you want to build a business for somebody else or for yourself. Also there is a restaurant example. Very often people want to make the money now, straight away, and it doesn't work like that. So that's where the uh, restaurant example comes in. Well, let's say, look, let's say you decided to open your own restaurant, right? So you decided to open a restaurant, that then you need to find the venue. So you look all, over, all around the town, etc., compare the prices and everything, and you find a nice venue. Find a nice venue, great. Then you start looking for all the equipment and you know kitchen tools and everything to get it all equipped, tables, chairs and all that. You got everything sorted, yeah? Then you start looking for staff members. So you need waiters, you need chefs, etc, etc, etc. So you look for these people, you go for all the interviewing, etc, etc. That takes another couple of months, you know, you got all of that sorted. Then obviously you have this restaurant ready to go, etc. But nobody knows about you. So now you need to start advertising and letting everybody know about your business. So again, you start advertising in television, radio, newspapers, flyering, leafleting, etc., etc. And then maybe another couple of months later, you'll start getting decent number of customers coming in. Now, how long did it took? It took you probably six months, maybe even a year, to get to that level. Now, how much money did it took? It must have taken a fortune to get a venue, to get all the uh, uh, equipment to get all the staff etc 
So you spent a fortune and nearly a year, you know, just start a traditional business. Now you starting a network marketing business, a business that can give you 10, 20,000 pounds a month profit with no investment whatsoever. And you want to earn that next week. How is about your logic, you know? Where is your logic? You need to understand, you need to be a business minded person, you need to think like a businessman. It will take time. However, if you're not prepared to invest that time, you know, you'll lose and miss out on a massive opportunity. And also we need to focus on results, not activity. Very often people will say, yeah, but I've spoken to so many people, you know, and nobody joined my business. Well, the result is that nobody joined your business. It's not, uh, the fact that you've spoken to so many people is not a result. So we need to think about results that we produce. And there are a few examples, you know, like a truck driving example, where a person gets uh, a task to drive truck from point A to point B and they'll get paid so much money. So the first day they go, you know, and take the truck to the MOT facility and check it out, it's all fine. Then the next day they wash the whole truck and clean it all, etc., etc. The third day they fill it up with diesel and all that, and etc., and get it ready for travel. But then on the fourth day they never leave and they never take the truck from A to B. Now they can go back to the employer and say, look, but I've taken this truck to MOT and I've washed it and I put petrol in it, etc. You know, you still should pay me for my efforts. But the employer, what will they say? I say, no, because you haven't pro produced the result that we asked. We asked for this truck to move from point A to point B, and you haven't done that. So this is how you need to think about your business. Unless I sell the perfume, unless I build the team, then I'm not going to be paid. You're not being paid for activity, you're being paid for results. And unless you produce those results, there's not going to be any pay. So we need to work with our ourselves, with our team members, in order to produce results. We need to teach them how they can produce results. Being your own customer helps. You know, using your own products, leading by example. You know, so again, unless you use your own products, how can you expect your customers to use your products? How can you expect your team members to use your products? And there comes a grocery store example. So I always ask people, you now I say, look, if you had your own grocery store, would you shut it in the evening and go buy your food from Tesco's? Of course not. You would be buying it from your own shop, right? So now you've got uh, perfume, cosmetics, and home cleaning product shop. So why would you carry on going to Tesco's or other and buy, you know, washing up powder or buying something else that you have in your own product range? Buy from yourself, get the points, start earning the money, show example to your team members. Do as I say, not as I do, doesn't work in this business. You need to do it. And we need to target decision making. So we need to give them the choice However, we may, you need to make sure that they'll choose the right one. Like uh, they said in the Godfather, we need to give them an offer that they can't resist. <laughs> so there are two types of buying products uh, you like, a wholesale or a retail. Which one would you choose if you had a choice? Or you can have your own part-time business and offer a great product or work for a company where you don't even know what the product is. What would you prefer? We need to give them the choice but make sure that they choose the right one. We need to target wants, not needs. Now, this is vitally important. People want to earn lots of money without working hard. People want to smell and look nice without spending a fortune on it. And we need to make sure that we target the wants and not needs. How do we do that? Well, one of the ways we can do that is think. You know, most people, they need to go to the dentist. They need to exercise. But do they want it? Of course not. So what we need to do is target the people that want to earn more money, that want to achieve something in life, that want to get a nicer car. Most people out there, 99% of people out there, they need this business. They need this business to get a better life, to get out of the rat race. But will they want it? Of course not. They rather waste their time on different things. So we can then work with those people that want it, that are looking for something. Okay, some of the icebreakers. Okay, so what's a quick way uh, of determining if the prospect is suitable for network marketing? Well, just a few questions. Would you like to earn additional income? It's a simple question, however, it takes a lot of uh, nonsense out of the way. Because the person then says, no, I'm really happy with the money I make. However, most people, especially nowadays, they'll go, yeah, what is it? You know, how do you do that? And then they're asking you for a presentation, not you offering them one. Or would you able to set aside five to seven hours a week then? 
You know, and again, if the person can't set aside any time to, now five to seven hours is just an example. Let's say the person says, nah, I can only set aside three hours a week. You're not going to say, nah, sorry, you're not suitable for this business. That's fine. They can set aside three hours, but they have to commit something. If they just say, oh, I'll do it when I have a chance, they're not going to have that chance, really, will they? The person needs to commit to this business in order to see results. And we need to locate people who are willing to do uh, network marketing and don't try to convince people. You know, so we cannot try and drag people screaming and kicking into this business because they're just not going to do anything. We need to find people who want to earn more, who want to change their life, who want uh, a better life. And there's an oyster example. Now, I'm not specialist with oysters or pearls. From what I gather is that uh, there's a special way of saying which oyster has a pearl inside it. However, if you went on and started opening all the oysters, you basically waste the ones uh, that hasn't got the pearl in it and they're not going to grow one if you open it whilst it hasn't had one. So what you do, you need to learn how to do that first. You know, and you need to just target the ones that have the pearl in them. So the same way in this network marketing, we need to determine if the person is looking for something in the first place. And if they are, then we can offer them the business. Don't try and convince people who, uh, whose dream is to live off benefits. You know, if their dream is to live off benefits, don't steal their dream away from them. Let them have it. And the power of referral, something a lot and lot of people forget about and neglect this thing. Referrals are so powerful, it's, an, it's just amazing. You know, always ask for referrals, you have to. You know, do you know anybody who'd like to earn an extra few hundred pounds a month? Or do you know anybody who'd like to save a fortune on the perfume, cosmetics and home products? Now, this is a really, really nice way of approaching people and it's a really nice way of raising awareness. Now, most people say, well, yeah, but what if they don't give me the, any contacts? That's fine. They don't give you, they don't give you. But if you don't ask, you're definitely not going to get any. But some people might say, well, I can think of somebody actually. Somebody I know could actually do this, you know, and they could use this. And they'll pass your details on, you know. It only takes one and you'll see that it works. Also, using these phrases is a rejection-free approach to prospects who might be interested in the, in the opportunity themselves. You know, so again, something, you know, before you offer the business opportunity to the person, you can say, well, who do you know who would like to use uh, earn a few hundred pounds a month extra? And the person will say, well, hang on a second, I'd like to earn a few hundred pounds a month extra. What do you have you got in mind? So most people then will ask for the presentation or the product. You know, they'll say, well, where do you get those perfumes? What do you mean? You know, where can I get those perfumes? And you then explain. Okay, what types of prospects we might find on our way? Well, there are a few types. Now, there are a lot of people join the company just to buy the product at the wholesale prices for themselves. And that's fine. But the second type of people buy it for themselves, but also offer it to family, friends, and work colleagues, getting 33% profit. And this way, they supplement their income by a few hundred pounds a month. And that's fine too. The third type of income, another group of people who join, make about 500 to 1500 pounds a month. And these people put a little bit more time in it. They want a part-time business, invest few evenings a week, and set few appointments with their prospects. And this is how they build a business. Now, the finally, there's a fourth group of people who earn about five to 16,000 pounds a month. Now, these people work really, really hard because they want to actively change their life, get out of the job they hate, and have a better future. And these people will be investing probably every day, every weekend, into building this business until they get to the results they want to get. You know, and I'm one of those people. I invest hell of a lot of time in this business and sometimes people look at me from the side and they go, oh, yeah, but you have less life than you had when you just had a job, right? However, I'd rather invest one, two, three years of really, really hard work but then retire for the next 40 years instead of just working Monday to Friday but for the rest of my life. That doesn't suit me. I'd rather work a few years hard and then enjoy the fruits for the rest of my life. And finally, generating prospects. Now one thing that uh, happens is that new people have lots of people to talk to but no, don't know how to do a good opportunity presentation. Experienced people have good presentation but no new people to talk to in their war market. When you do two-on-one presentations, that's the key. The experienced person does the presentation whilst the new person learns how to do that. And this is why I always encourage my new team members 
don't go out there and don't talk to anybody. Invite all your people to presentations, to meetings with your sponsor, to uh, webinar events, and let them hear the opportunity from an experienced person, and you sit next to them and learn how to do the presentation, how to present the business. You will increase your success, chance of success tenfold if you do it this way. And once you learn how to do the presentation, nobody stops you to go out there and approach the cold market. Also, uh, people from one's war market are more polite to strangers they bring, uh, they bring with them. And it's surprising, I know, but it is how it is. When you try and present the business to somebody you knew for years, they can't see you as a business person. They see you as a mate, as a friend, as a, as a family member. They can't see you seriously as a business person. And they'll keep interrupting you and they keep going off the topic. When you bring somebody else, a person that they don't know, to the business opportunity presentation and they present the business to them, the person, at least out of respect, they sit quietly and listen and pay attention to what is actually happening. And this is how uh, you become more successful.